I want to share with you a little bit about Missy's life. It was over 20 years ago she came. I don't think I was here, but it was during the summer. One evening, I believe, and she came. She was going by the church, and something told her, you need to go in there. You need to stop at that church. And so she did. They come in and prayed for her, and she got saved. And she's always noticed a difference here in the presence of God. She's been through a lot. She's battled cancer. She's battled a lot of things. And uh, But God keeps bringing her back. She drives from Brooklyn, up around Brooklyn, to come here. So, I don't know if I've come that far for, you know, but, yeah. <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'm just glad we've been praying for people to get on the praise team. <laughs> We're looking for a piano player um, or organ, whichever. So anyway, but God's been faithful. He brought her back and he brought Ruth to us. And I don't know if Ruth's been playing that long or not. Have you? No. How long? A year. A year. So, see, it can be done. Because God is a good God. And He will open doors and make a way. You know, I remember the first couple times I seen her here, she was so shy and so... But then God had a plan. And we need to realize that God has a plan for each and every one of us. It's whether we want to be a part of His plan. That's the bottom line. Sometimes we just want to do our own thing. Um, and that's not what God wants. He wants to use you for His glory and for what He has. I want you to open your Bibles, if you would, to Psalms 139. You know, we've been talking about amazing grace and how awesome that grace is. Without grace, we couldn't be saved. Without the good goodness of God, and our God is good. We've had a bunch of uh, prayer praises this week and other things going on. And God's just been good. And so we need to realize how good He is. He gave us grace because He knew we couldn't be good enough. And many of us feel that way. We won't even try to serve God because we don't feel good enough. But that's exactly what the enemy wants you to do. So who are we going to let live? Who are we going to let gain access in our lives? Our flesh or God? That's the bottom line. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the music team and, Father, what you've done and what you're doing. It's not finished yet, Father. You're an awesome God. You care for our every needs. You care for our sickness, Father. That we shouldn't walk in it, but we should walk in health and strength. And it's only by your grace and your mercy, Father, that, that we can be free and those chains broken off of us. So you're a good, good God. And Father, we thank you for that. Now, Father, as we look into your living word, I pray that you would open our ears, that our spirits would be open to the preaching of your word, Father, the truth of it. And, Father, you have potential in all of us. So, Father, help us to just become obedient to what you want us to do, not what others are doing but just what you have for each and every one of us to fulfill that need here in the body of Christ. And Father, I thank you and I praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. If you have your Bibles open to Psalms 139, this is David and he's... Uh, Speaking about God and what God means to him. What does God mean to you? Is he greater? We sung it. Is he greater than silver or gold to you? 
Is he in a place in your life that you're seeing blessings? Even though through the midst we have trouble in this world, but God causes everything to work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And that's what we need to be, called according to his purpose. I don't know how long Ruth sat here before she decided to be part of a music team. But God's a good God. And he used her, and he's using Missy, he's using Steve. And using you when you're here. <laughs> you still at camp? Amen. One more week. One more week. So, anyway, <clears throat> you have to ask yourself a question. Do you want to be used by God? Do you want God to use you? Do you want to go deeper with God? Do you want to see more of Him in your life? Because the Bible tells us if we draw close to Him, He will draw close to you. And you're only as close to God as you want to be. Amen. That is on you. And if you want to be close to Him, you'll spend time with Him and you'll find out you'll fall in love with Him. And because of what He did dying on a cross for your sins, He took your place. He made a way where there seemed to be no way. In verse 1, it says, Oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. Do you realize that's what God does to you? He knows you. He knows how you're going to respond. He knows what's going on in your heart. He's all about what's in your heart. And He wants to have full reign on your heart. The thing of it is, do we want to give Him full reign? Do we want to surrender to His ways and His purposes for our lives? And we need to do that if we want to see God moving through us <coughs> and for us. You know, verse 2, you know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar off. God even knows what you're thinking right now. I wish he'd hurry up and get done. Hello. <laughs> you discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. You can't hide nothing from God. He knows what you're thinking. He knows your heart. He knows your mind. And yet we try to play games with Him. We try to, to make everybody else think that we're all about God sometimes. Or we got everything together. But God knows your heart. You're not going to have to answer to me. I was with somebody. Where was that? I don't remember. That gets easier too. Not remember. But the bottom line is, I was somewhere and somebody was saying things and going and on and on. And it was just the last few weeks. And all of a sudden he says, what do you do for a living? And I said, I'm a preacher. Whoa. He goes, sorry. <laughs> he had said some things that wasn't quite right. You know <laughs> But you know what? You don't have to answer to me. You have to answer to God. You have to, you're going to stand before him sooner or later and give an account of your life. And what will you say? Most of us will fall to our knees for mercy because of his awesomeness. And that's what I want to talk about today. God's awesomeness. He wants, to, he wants us to know that He knows everything that's going on in our life. He knows where He wants you to go. But you've got to choose to go where He wants you to go. David was going to be king. And yet he was a shepherd boy. And sometimes we think God has... Nothing for us when he has so much. If we will just surrender to him. 
Verse 4, I've read that, but before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. You know, that's one thing that we have to realize that God can touch our lives and totally turn it around. That's why we come to church. Because our lives can be ch changed. And a lot of people won't come until their life needs to be totally, they, they've hit the total bottom. And you don't have to go there. All you have to do is <coughs> All you have to do is trust God with your life. Now, if He knows all these things that we just read about you, why wouldn't you trust Him? Why wouldn't you surrender to Him? If he knows all this stuff, the words you're going to say. He hems us in. Sometimes he makes us go through things so we can become more like Jesus. And we die to self every time we do that. We die to what we want. And that's going on all the time. You know, there's no way out of this world unless Jesus comes back. But death. Because the wages of sin is death. Because we have a sin nature, we fall short of the glory of God. And I know we all know that, but we've got to keep hearing it until it really gets in our hearts. And so that we're ready for whatever God has for us. And if you want to see a new you, you've got to see Him. You've got to let Him touch you. You've got to let Him use you in a way that you never thought God could use you. I never wanted to be a preacher. There's days I still don't want to be a preacher. Hello. Somebody said to me this week, I really want to come to church, but I just can't get up. And I looked at them. I said, there's days I don't want to get up and go either. But my wife makes me. <laughs> Some things don't change. My mom used to dra drag me to church. I had a drug problem. My mom drove me to church. <laughs> Do you get that? <laughs> such knowledge as verse 6, such knowledge is too wonderful, wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Do you realize... And we'll get to this in a little bit. But I've been looking up how our bodies function. Our brain. What is our brain made up of? And how did God put three parts of our brain to make all our body work no matter what? If everything's right and there's no sickness or disease or illness, our body will function like God made it to. And you know, if you stop and think, I kind of pace when I preach, but I can multitask because I can talk and do that at the same time. But something's telling me to walk. So everything in me, that brain and what it goes down, it's telling my legs, communicating to go. And to do what my mind's thinking. Sometimes that's dangerous. But have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about how God made us? And our brain only weighs three pounds. And yet it can do amazing things. It functions all my arms, my legs, my muscles. Everything in me, it functions. And sometimes we have malfunctions, especially guys with our ears. Amen. <laughs> Did I hear an amen? <laughs> You're too young to be amen. <laughs> but you realize the importance of just that brain that God put together and he put up there? And there's no such thing as like a, it's the best computer on the earth, but there's not a lot of wires, but yet there's circuits and there's matter and it does matter. 
Some of us are short on that up there. <laughs> but the bottom line is, God made us. And it just didn't happen out of a bang. Somebody had to be able to do that. Somebody had to be able to make our mind, our brain, so that runs every three different sections of our brain, runs everything in our body and controls it. And one section tells it when to do this, and one section tells it to do that. Another section just makes it all happen. It's like a transmitter. And that's our brain stem. And as I was reading over this, I thought, God, you're so awesome. There's none like you. There's nothing that you can't do. And yet we worry about our life and what's going on in our life and if we're going to make it or not. And what God has in store. If He can make a brain and He can make a body and He can cause it all to function and we know when, when somebody has disease or somebody has a, a problem, we get to see the evidence of that. That problem. Knowing that it's not like God ordained it to be, but it's the way it is. God knows our thoughts. He knows everything in us. He knows what you're thinking right now. He knows the desires of your heart. And He wants to give you those desires. Now, if a God could make a brain, and then I studied about the eyes, and how the eyes work to give us vision. Part of that comes from our brain. Now, who can do that? Who can do that? It just doesn't happen by circumstances. It just doesn't happen unless there's a creator. It only happens when there's a God of the universe. <clears throat> And who put this world together? And everything that's going on, good. It's us humans that make the world bad. God intended it for it to be good. Even in Genesis, as he created things, he said it is good. And you know he says that about you today. It is good. And maybe you're not exactly where God wants you to be. Are you willing to surrender so he can take you where he wants you to be? To make a difference in your life. To have the best life you could ever have. That doesn't mean you're not going to have troubles because the Bible says you will have troubles in this world. That's why I prayed last night when it was storming. But the bottom line is, God created you and he created me. And our kidneys have a function. Our liver has a function. Our pancreas has a function. And God made it all. And who would have thought the details that God made in our bodies? Why we have tears? Why we have eyelids? Because God knew we was going to need them. Remember months ago, and I sometimes I recap this all the time, in creation, God created everything first that man would need, and then he created a man and a woman. So he was making sure we was taken care of and had everything we need. And like someone said this morning, you got to seek, you got to ask, and you got to knock if you don't have those things. I pray for healing for my diabetes every day. And I'm going to keep praying until I get healed. And I'm not going to give up. 
And if God don't heal me, I'm going to do the best I can do. But if he heals me, you're going to hear about it. Okay? And I really believe God told me one morning. He said the voices and the music from this praise team are going to break yokes and bring healing in people's lives. Because I want it to happen. I want it to happen that nobody can take credit for it but God. And I keep praying that. Because I believe if God could make my brain, if God could make all my organs so they function perfectly, and without them, we wouldn't have life. When you get a bad kidney, a bad liver, all those things, which I believe come from sin, I think that God is big enough to bring healing in my life. To bring answers to my question in my life. If he can create a body that functions and the brain just tells it to wiggle your toes right now. How in the world did you do that? See, I think of these. I'm pretty simple. You raise your hand. You do it without thinking. There's just something that says, do it, and it happens. And that's because of our God. He was not only an awesome God that he brought salvation, and he paid for my sins, but he's an awesome God that he gave me life. He breathed it into me, and it made a difference. And we've got to be thankful for the life that God gave us. And if you need your life changed, you need to get closer to Him. You need to keep hearing the Word. You need to keep it. And that's what breaks yokes. Because you're finding out the truth, what God really says about you. And that's what we read about His knowledge. But verse 4, it said, Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. Verse 6 says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lawfully for me to attain. Verse 7 says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise, <clears throat> rise on, wings, <clears throat> on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. This is what David was saying about his God. He went through a lot. Saul was trying to kill him because Saul was jealous of him. And he was envious of him. I mean, when people go through the streets and say Saul has, has killed so many, but then when they talk about David and they're singing his song, but he has taken care of thousands. And jealousy broke in. Because he wanted to be like David. And that's where envy and jealousy and all that wickedness comes into our heart. And all we got to do is be what God made you to be. Not what somebody else is. We don't need somebody else. If we've already got that person, we don't need two of them. We just need one. And your abilities are all different. And it doesn't make you wrong. It makes you you. Because God created you. And he longs to take you where you've never been before. Spiritually. By trusting Him in your life. Verse 13. For you created my inmost beings, our brains, our bodies, everything that's in them, every organ. God created it. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Do you praise God because 
You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Even how your body functions. Not everybody's voice is the same. Not everybody can carry a tune in a bucket. Not everybody can sing or play. But God anointing on you makes a total difference. You don't have to be like anybody else except Jesus. That's who we're supposed to be like. Because we're going to answer to God. And God is going to look at Jesus and he's going to say one thing. Did you know them or didn't you know them? That's the bottom line. It all comes back to relationship. And you know what? You can know God only the way you know Him. And it's great when God brings us all together on a Sunday and we're all going through something and maybe you've been through it and God can use that in our lives and He can give us the answers that we need. And He can use someone to strengthen you. And maybe that's what you are. Use it. Use it. Be what God has made you to be. He knit you together in your mother's womb. You're wonderfully, your works are wonderful. I know that full and well. Do you know that? In your own personal life. You may think God just does it for, for Misty or Missy or Ruth, Steve, or even me. But God will do it for you. You've got to seek Him. You've got to knock. You've got to ask. And He'll do it. My frame, verse 15, my frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. God knew exactly when you was being formed. God knew how he was going to knit you together. And he made you, especially for this time and this place, to be what only you can be, to add to the body of Christ, to be a part of it, and to know that God is using you in a wonderful way. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Let's read that again. You need to underline that. God had a purpose. God had a plan. And he said, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. God knew who you was going to be. There is no mistakes. God knows exactly what he's doing in a woman's womb. And he uses a woman for that very thing. Of course, there has to be a man for the completion of it. But in my eyes, the woman does all the work. Amen? Amen? Boy, girls, you made it. That was a chance. <laughs> and that's the bottom line. So even male and female, God had a plan. God had a purpose. Even in that, let alone using our brains, our heart. That's a whole other story. We won't get to that today. But what I'm trying to tell you is how amazing is God that he knew my days even before one day took place. Now, wouldn't you want to be with him? Wouldn't you want to do what he has for you to do? I want you to turn to Ephesians. Chapter 1. Keep your place there. Too late, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ephesians 1, verse 
Ephesians 1, 11. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. Underline that whole sentence because that means so much. Write it down. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. If you surrender, God is going to work it all out. You may not know how, but that's the best part of it. That you get to see God work in your life. You get to see God take you where you've never been before. And what he wants to do in your life. Ephesians 2.10 we're going to start with eight. Is <clears throat> for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. It is not a, from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. We, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared when in advance for us to do. Does God have a plan for you? Is it your plan? Or do you want his plan? A lot of times we don't see God move simply because we're not in his plan. We're in our own plan. We want to do it our way. But God has a better plan that he's worked out before you was even born. He thought of you and he knew he was going to put you here at this time for this special place to make a difference in this world. Well, how can I make a difference? Nobody's ever heard of Betzer. Where? But you know why? It's not about building the church. It's about building God's kingdom. It's about building God's kingdom, not our kingdom. And when you get to that place and God starts building his kingdom, you're going to see you had little to do with it, but God had to use you. No matter what you think of yourself. And that's why I'm reading this all to you because I want you to understand that God knew your days before you was even born. And he had a plan for you. He had something he wanted to do in you and through you. If you will just surrender to his life. Bill. 11. <clears throat> Can't even find it. Have I been there? If I say, surely in the darkness you will hide me, and the light become, <clears throat> become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day. For darkness is as light to you. You know the Bible says in him there is no darkness. And we're not going to need the sun or the moon when we get to we get to the new Jerusalem because he is going to be our light. We can't even imagine that. We don't even know what he means by that. But his thoughts are awesome. You know. The disciples didn't have a clue who he was, a lot of them. They, he was telling them exactly what was going to happen, and they didn't believe it half the time. Or they thought of a different way. And that's the way we are. We've got to follow God's thoughts, not our thoughts. There is no darkness in him, only light. Verse 13, for you created my innermost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I think I read that. I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full and well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made the secret place. You wove me together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. 
all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. A precious <clears throat> to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would be outnumber they would outnumber the grains of the sand. And when I awake, I am still with you. Verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offense in my ways. And lead me in the way of everlasting. You know, that part is something that we need to do every day. From verse 23, for God to search me and for me to listen to him. And a lot of people don't want to deal with that. They don't want to do what God wants them to do. They want to be what God, what they want to be and what they want to do. Go to 2 Timothy. Chapter 3, verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last day. People will be lovers of who? So. Themselves. Lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, Without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of good, having a form of godliness but denying its power. When we put our lives under, back in chapter 139 Psalms and verse 26, and we say, God, search me. And know my heart. Let me know if what's in there. Because God knows. We may be blind to the fact. Spiritually. That all we're after is pleasure. All we're after is those things that was written in 2 Timothy chapter 3. How could God be so right? He even knows the times that we're in. And you kind of got to wonder if it's going to get worse. And it is. Because God has a plan. And he knows how to take care of it. And everyone is going to stand before him. Are you ready to stand before God? If you're not, then you ought to stick to verse 23 and 24. And we all ought to do this daily because we all are broken people. We've been through things that nobody else has been through. Whether it's been abuse physically, sexually, emotionally, that messes with you and how you relate to everybody else. It's not your fault unless it is your fault. It's not your fault, but the only one that can fix it is God. And we have to keep coming back to this part. And this is a part of repentance. And that's where our nation needs to go to now. You can't keep doing everything that our nation's doing and expect to keep going. Judgment will fall. And God is in control. But men think they know better than God. And after everything we've read here today, who are you voting for? You see, we can see a world now that has no God. They've taken God out of everything and they're still trying to take him out of more. And we wonder why we got the results that we've got. It's humanism. Marxism. And we think we know better than God. 
even in our own personal lives. And that's where we need to come to repentance, not only as a nation, because God tells us in Chronicles chapter 7, 14 or 14, 7, that if my people who are called by my name seek my face and call upon me, I will heal their nation. I will heal their land. That's where we need to be. We don't need to be supporting all the evil that's going on. And even if you go back and read the one section that I didn't read or left out, but it, it talks about the people that, that God hated, verse 19 through 22, the people that was against God. And David says, I don't like them either. But the bottom line is, we're all going to give an account. So after every day is done, and I need to do this as much as you need to do this, as we come back to verse 23, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. You know, sometimes we've got triggers. My wife worked at a recovery place with alcohol and she was a caseworker. And, and you've got a trigger that will take you right back to the bad thing. But God's the only one that can take care of that trigger. And the first thing you want to do when that trigger goes off is go back to where you was. And how you was dealing with it. Maybe denying it. And the Bible says that a man that says he has no sin is a liar. And God is not in him. So we're all sinful. We all fall short. But Jesus made a way. And if he can make this brain and these ears. By the way, I think I told you this, but I am voice tone deaf to a woman's voice. I've had two ear specialists tell me that. And you know what I told them? You're going to tell my wife. <laughs> Because she wouldn't believe me. I just had the second one tell me that a few months ago. And I thought, God, you're good. You know? <laughs> but you know what? The one woman, she was the ear specialist. You know what she said? You got a hearing aid now. You got no excuse. <laughs> and you know that's the way it is for us. Jesus has made a way. And he can give you the best life you've ever had. Amen. And it won't be boring. Hang around with me. I'll show you. It won't be boring. It'll be the most life. And you'll see more of Jesus move when you just total surrender to him. Amen. Because if he can make a brain, make eyes, have you ever thought about how we see? What is going on up there? And who made it? God. I've blown some things up before, and the only thing come out of it was a disaster and a mess. So it isn't the big bang thing that happened. And you didn't squiggle from a worm, because I ain't seen no worms with a head on them. Have you? The bottom line is, he is our creator. And you know what? He made you for a special time as this. To be where you need to be to make a difference in your life. And you are here today by appointment with God. That he wanted you to hear this message. He wanted you to hear those songs that break the yoke. He wanted you to hear Missy's testimony of that time when she was so far down. And God planned this all for us this day. Hello.
Is there anything God can't do? You know, I, when I first become a Christian, some guy come up to me and says, so you believe God can do anything? I said, yeah. He says, can he make a rock so big he can't lift it? I said, don't test God. He'll drop that rock. <laughs> Amen? But we come up with those things. And how can we look at our body, our organs, and everything in us and think that there is not a God and that he doesn't know best? And he told us our best in that Bible. And we as a world are running from that. A nation, nations around the world, trying to get rid of God. What are they thinking? We need to pray for a revival. That people will see and understand how great God is. And that one day you're going to stand for every decision we make, every word we say, you are going to stand before God and give an account of what you did in this life. How's that looking for each and every? Well, that's easy for you. You're a pastor. I wasn't always a pastor. In fact, one time, I did a funeral for my wife's friend, and it just happened to be one of the girl I dated was there, and she walked right up to me after the service, and she looked me in the eye, and she says, I can't believe you're a pastor. I says, I can't either. <laughs> we all got a sinful nature. What you gonna do with yours? Are you going to use it for the kingdom? Are you going to let God transform you into what he wants you to be? And all the evidence that I showed you today, God is an awesome God. Amen? Amen. And we need to live like he's an awesome God. We need to tell people what he's doing in your life. Amen? Amen. Then just do it. Just be what God wants you to be. Let's stand our feet. It's hot in here. <laughs> Might help if I didn't wear long sleeves. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, you are an awesome God. Even as we read what David said about you. And Father, look how you used David. You made him a king when he was a shepherd boy. Now, Father, there's a lot of shepherd boys and girls in this audience here today. And so, Father, I pray that your anointing will fall on them. That nobody will be able to talk them out of it. That you will put a fire in them to make a difference. For your glory. For your name's sake. And so, Father, I just pray, if there's someone here that doesn't know you, that your spirit is drawing them. And, Father, you are, you are touching their heart and making the hard heart soft. What an awesome God. There's none like you. None like you. And so, Father, we thank you and praise you. Because you are the creator of heaven and earth and even of us. You knew us while we was in the womb. You knew us. And Father, forgive our sins. Touch our lives. Help us to run to you, the only answer, Jesus, because he paid for my sin. He bought me back from the devil. Now, Father, stir the hearts of those you love because you love all of us. Even if we don't choose you, your love is still there. I can't fathom that. But, Father, that's you. 
Now, Father, make us and mold us and shape us into what you want us to be as we surrender to you. And, Father, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Great two or three people, and you're dismissed. <laughs> <laughs>